Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing blood glucose levels, the dangers of fluctuations in blood glucose, insulin, glucagon and finally a summary. Your blood contains sugar. One of these sugars is glucose. Glucose is a type of sugar which acts as a store of energy. Glucose is carried around in the blood so cells can use chemical reactions to release the energy found in glucose. This is through respiration. For the body to function normally, it's really important for blood glucose or sugar levels to be kept constant. This happens through homeostasis. People who can't keep their blood glucose level constant may have diabetes. We talk about this more in another video. Any change from the normal range of blood glucose level can be very dangerous. Now I'm going to talk about what happens if blood glucose levels are outside its normal range. Blood glucose levels that are too high can be very damaging, especially for nerves and blood vessels. This shows a nerve. And remember, nerves are used to send electrical impulses that carry information across the body. This is blood. Blood transports the substances our body needs, such as glucose and oxygen. On the other hand, when blood glucose levels are too low, this may result in cells being not able to respire effectively. This is because it doesn't receive sufficient glucose needed for respiration. As respiration transfers energy to the cell, it may mean if cells can't respire, they can no longer function properly. So how do we avoid this and regulate blood glucose levels? Well, we do this through hormones. The pancreas monitors blood glucose levels and controls it by releasing hormones. And one of these hormones is insulin. What does insulin do? Well, insulin decreases the blood glucose concentration, and that's the amount of blood glucose in your blood. This insulin is released into the bloodstream when the pancreas detects that the blood glucose concentration is too high. This happens after digesting foods containing carbohydrates. This, for example, could be a piece of toast or a slice of cake. So what happens after you eat a slice of cake? First, it's digested by the gut. The carbohydrates in the cake are broken down into glucose molecules. This is transferred to the blood, and so the blood glucose level increases. Your pancreas then detects the rise in blood glucose levels and reacts to this by producing the hormone insulin. Now let's look at how insulin decreases blood glucose levels. The actions of insulin are to increase the uptake of glucose from the blood into cells. In this example, glucose is taken up by muscle cells. These muscles can use this glucose for respiration to transfer energy for muscle contraction. Insulin also stimulates liver and muscle cells to take up glucose and convert it into glycogen. This is for storage, and they do this through several enzyme-controlled reactions. This is glycogen. It acts as a store of glucose, which means we don't have to be constantly eating to obtain glucose. This causes blood sugar levels to fall back down to normal. And this is how your body keeps glucose levels constant. Now let's talk about another hormone, glucagon. Glucagon is also produced by the pancreas, and glucagon increases the blood glucose concentration. It's released into the bloodstream where the pancreas detects that the blood glucose concentration is too low. This may happen after exercise. Glucose is taken out of the bloodstream to be used in muscles for contraction. This leads to a decrease in blood glucose concentration. The pancreas detects this low glucose concentration and then produces glucagon as a response. So what exactly does glucagon do? Well, the actions of glucagon are to stimulate the liver and muscle cells to convert glycogen back into glucose to be released into the blood. So glycogen in the liver and muscle cells is converted back into glucose. And this causes blood glucose levels to rise back to normal. Insulin and glucagon work together to maintain a constant blood glucose level. Their release from the pancreas is controlled by a cycle of negative feedback. Negative feedback is a form of homeostasis and it helps keep everything balanced. For example, 
when blood glucose levels are too high, this causes an increase in the release of insulin and it also causes a decrease in the release of glucagon. However, when blood glucose levels are too low, this causes an increase in the release of glucagon as well as a decrease in insulin. And this raises blood glucose levels back up to a normal level. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.